Well, this is part six of an Art Rage digital painting workshop that's been focused on painting an Irish Shepherd, his dog, sheep, and the surrounding countryside. Now, if you randomly stumbled across this video, make sure to go watch parts one through five. It'll help you make more sense of everything. And if you want to paint along, you can get the line drawing and brushes and everything else from my Gumroad page, and the links are down below. So if you're getting a lot out of these lessons, make sure to check out how to become a patron of this uh, channel. Because really what that means is you'll be able to have access to hours more digital painting lessons and early access to ad free versions of these lessons and a lot more, all for only $3 a month. It really helps me with making more content. So please consider checking it out. So ready to finish this lesson up? Let's get to it. Run that intro. Okay, so let's work on these sheep. They've been a bit neglected. So let's see what we can do with them. A little bit pulled together for what we need, so we'll go to watercolor impressionistic cloud brush because these guys are all fluffy. And let's get this out of the way. We're gonna go with a kind of a grayish brown kind of color, and we're gonna do it a new layer because if I put that over top of this blue gray on the same layer it's gonna give that greenish kind of tint to it where it burns out so we don't want that and we'll start laying in some of these and thinking about how the light looks and everything else as well so that way we can kind of uh, be on top of what we want it to look for the herd All right, so again, kind of a generic light source. Let's increase this a little bit. It's a little too bright. And it's really funny if you look at sheep, you know, we always think how white they are, but really they're not. They're kind of a grayish color and a brownish color. And in my mind, I think these guys are heading off to probably be sheared. So we're going to make them, keep them a little fluffy. Maybe a little extra fluffy. Maybe he's running a little late on getting there. I'm going to bring back our sketch a little bit so I can kind of have that road map back for where I want them. Okay. grabbing some of that overlap color so I can have some shadow. don't want to get rid of all of this bluish gray that we put under there, you know, but I don't need all of it either. Some of them actually have really dark legs. They have like these black legs under here. And kind of a blackish head and ears, so we may kind of keep some of that. A little bit for a hunt. 
because again if you're doing these and it's just not laying down the paint you just need to get blending too much and you just need to go to a different layer to throw in some of the highlights and then control alt down gives us that so let's see how this reads without the sketch very fuzzy okay you ain't fat, you fluffy. Alright, so I'm going to grab a little bit of this dark color from the dog, and I'm going to switch back to my charcoal and get some of these feet laid in. Kind of like the uh, Black-footed sheep. I don't know if there's a certain type that's like that, or what I would imagine, but I kind of like that look. And do the same for their faces and ears. Pressing a little bit harder, which takes out some of this texture. Just so I can get this laid in. So. And let's see how that looks. So let's jump down here. We're going to take the eraser tool get rid of some of this. We'll have to come back and soften all this but that's not a big deal. We need to kind of clean that up a little bit. So then go to K for palette knife. And I'm just going kind of around this. And then, so pretty much vertical, 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 horizontal. Vertical, 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 horizontal. We'll come back and fix up some of those shadows. But that gives us a good start to these guys. So let's jump back up here. We're going to go back to our chalk brush. We're going to grab this color here and not go too much more towards the white, but just up a little bit in value, maybe over just a little bit in white. Really kind of define some of these edges, like so. I don't mind the chalk texture on this because it just kind of helps add to that feeling of fluffiness. And when I get down here I'll soften it just a little bit with less pressure. Like so. And like so. Just a 
just some soft swirling motions to kind of get that wool kind of feel. guys are really just a mass of wool and stuff. And it's part of the reason why sheep clump when they do that. It makes it hard for a predator to know what end they're attacking. That whole safety and numbers thing. Switch to the pencil. We can make a few refined highlights. we don't want to tighten up too much like the dog fur because we do want some of that roughness to it okay so now let's kind of tighten up these ears a little bit the face face is very angular so if you can see any of it it's going to be kind of this angular look to it. So this layer and let's get rid of some of this just created. Okay. And we need to add just a little bit of a highlight to ears. So the pencil.
have a look at something real quick. Um, trying to find actually a better source for back of the sheep's leg. Actually, fudge on this a little bit because I don't want to spend overly too much time and overwork their their feet the way they should be. And honestly, nobody would even probably look except for the fact that I'm zoomed in while I'm doing this. It's kind of like Harrison Ford when he said when Luke. When uh, Mark Hamill came out of the water, in the first out of the pit, the garbage pit from the thing, and one scene his hair is wet, the next scene his hair is dry, and he said, "Hey, we're, isn't this a continuity issue? Don't we want to change that?" And Harrison Ford looked at him and said, "It ain't that kind of film, kid. Well, ain't that kind of painting." So if people are looking, paying too much attention to the sheep's feet, then. Perhaps something is wrong. I just need it to be reminiscent of a sheep. And you know, don't. It, you can get as. You know, if your stuff is you want to be realistic and you want to be photo realistic with stuff, then go for it. You know? I mean, if you want that kind of look and feel, then spend the extra time doing that. I personally don't. I just want the impression of it and the feel of it. And I'm way zoomed in. I mean, I'm right now I'm at 200%. So, I mean, that reads as sheep. That's all I need it to do. And so that's all I'm really going to worry about it doing. Although I'm going to put a few highlights on here. Just to kind of, so they're not just entirely black blobs, but... But, you know... It ain't that kind of painting, kid. Right. Now, watch those. Now what I want to do is kind of blur up these bottoms. And we're going to seed them a little bit more into the ground on this dirt road. And this is why I'm not overly concerned with how these looked as far as like it's at the exact um, way it should be for matching We can do a little bit of dirt. Not coming across. Like so. Um, we could even do this is an old dirt path. Chances are it's going to have some grass sticking up. So we can do some grass. Now the key with that is don't do that all just around the sheep's feet. 
because it will look like you're trying to hide the sheep's feet, even though you are. Doesn't mean everybody has to know that. some of these bottom parts. So we can take and add a little bit more dirt. those in there. So now that really kind of puts them into the painting. We can add a few more here and there. We kind of come off the edge. Like so. Seats them. Okay, so that gives us some of the sheep, and it gives us the man, gives us the dog. And we've got an interesting bit of stuff here. So I want to push this a little more, so add this for a second. visible layers. Alright. So that kind of changed the layer order a little bit, but that's fine. Let's take out some of this. Just delete it. Okay. Soften it back. Let's change that from hard wet blender to heavy blurred frosting. Gives us a softer cloud look. Alright, so I did that because I want to add a new layer and I want to go to kind of a bluish gray. I'm going to go to F for fill. And I'm going to fill that. Now, it also shows me where I need to do this to the fog. Get rid of any lingering hard edges. Like so. And then I'm going to put this to blend mode difference. Oops, not difference, I'm sorry. And my brain just stopped working. I'm trying to remember which one I'm looking for. That's what it was. Now I want to go to this bluish color. I want to lower this down. I'm trying to subdue some of the colors a little bit because remember this is supposed to be a gray day, right? So that kind of lays over everything and unifies it a bit. It does wash it out, but that's fine. 
play around with the color a little bit with this, the opacity like so now I'm gonna go to E I'm gonna go to soft eraser change that to 10 percent there we go so now what I want to do with the eraser is erase some of that and this soft eraser may be just a little too soft so this is a very subtle thing but it is doing something if you can't tell so we're kind of pulling out just some general hot spots, some general saturation. And really kind of poking some of these plants through. Like so. And like I said, it's very subtle. I don't know if it's even you can even tell it on the screen what I'm doing. Okay. But it just kind of unifies everything together. Kind of softens it. Now what I want to do is merge that down. Make a new layer. Set the blend mode to overlay. Of a yellowish color. And our cloud brush. Oops. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch to this watercolor brush just because I think it gives a little bit more interest for where the light is hitting and this is just the general part for right now I'm gonna come back in and soften this but I want to get some of the stuff kind of laid in Okay, so that gives a little bit different fill to the light and kind of lets me put in some highlights and shadow areas like so, so that it kind of pulls that in a little bit. And we can even go to the airbrush. different areas that we want to highlight. Like so. And get kind of that 
pop of color here and there. If there's any that are too much, like some of this dog, we'll just kind of eliminate those. color and change the mode to multiply and we can put in a little bit more shadow for some of the sheep So that gives us a little bit more of a pulled together look, which kind of plays into that whole dreary, foggy Ireland kind of thing. So one of the last things I'm going to do that opacity just a little bit and I'm going to zoom in here and right here we're going to add in just a little bit more grass same trick what we did before was slightly softening some of these back sides to get them to blend in a little better not quite so harsh and that just kind of sets that bank a little bit better okay now from here it's a matter of personal taste and preference. Do you want to refine this guy a little more? Do you want to refine the dog a little more? The sheep? The flowers? The stuff in the distance? Whatever. So it's really just kind of up to you for how you want it to look and feel. Um, 
could go in to here and add, so let's go to one thing I think it could use is maybe just a little bit more on these waves. Just a little bit of highlight. And maybe some of the same back here. And up in here, a few white caps. Here and there. Like so. This is the part where you really just get to, you know, add a little icing to the cake for what you want it to look like. Um, you could even take from the stencils, if you have my stencils, there's a water ripple. So you could refine these a little more. Also, yeah. find my stencil real quick. I have this rock texture. So if our light's kind of a diffused, and yeah, we want to add just a little bit of discernible, a little bit more discernible texture to these rocks. So it's one of those things that's just a subtle thing, but your brain will pick up on it. Just a little bit of extra um, detail that you can throw in there. Zoom out. 
So see how it just kind of adds some of that interest to it. it gives just a little bit more detail in the background to what you're looking at. And again, these stencils are on Gumroad, so if you don't have them, go over there and get them. They're not much. Some of them are even free. And you just want a hint of texture, so you don't want to get too crazy with it. But hopefully this gives you a bunch of different things that you can try out for playing around with this. I hope you'll give this one a try and let me know, you know what it looks like. Share it with me if you do it. Give a link to it. I'd love to take a look at what you've done and kind of see where you're at with everything. So I appreciate you sticking with me. I know this was a bit of a longer one uh, as far as the overall lessons, but uh, I think it's a good thing and kind of goes through a lot of stuff that you can really work on. So appreciate you, and uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments.